does he do? He might go all the way. He gives it a ride. It's a chance. It'll be a goal. Now it's time to move on to our big three sliders. So I'm going to kick it off first. Uh, and obviously this one, a lot of people would understand why. This isn't a uh, an attack on the player at all whatsoever. But Dan Hannabury, um has unfortunately been one of our bits, big sliders this year, Josh. His season hasn't been, uh, unfortunately, very good. No, no, it hasn't. Um, uh, it's, well... Dan's been. We've talked about Dan a lot lately, yeah, haven't we? we have. been, since, yeah. since the bye, just the poor bastard can't get a break. You know, we've had. I mean, realistic, we've had had probably three games out of him this year where he wasn't injured. Um, the the um, the St Kilda game where he wasn't that great, but he at least he looked like he was moving okay, like he had some fitness. He got from contest yeah. to contest, but he didn't sort of impact it much. Um, he was really good against West Coast. Um, we forget that his numbers for that weren't great, but we forget that he actually was a run with role with Gaff, and and yep. and that was one of the reasons we were able to win that game, despite not kicking a goal for two quarters. Um, and I can't remember what the the last game was. Oh, his best game for the year. Oh, his best game for the year was Melbourne. Melbourne against Melbourne, uh, where his yep. numbers were really quite good. Um, uh, and then he promptly went out the next week and did something else to his body and uh, yeah. the corky, I think it was the next week. So. Um, look, he hasn't had a preseason for two years. He's been constantly injured. Um, whether that's going to be a long-term issue or not, or he's just unlucky, I don't know. But um, he, uh, it's hard. It's hard to deny though that he, his output this year, injury or not, has been pretty, pretty average. Yeah. Look, it's if you go back to 2015, it was a big deal when teams were managing to, you know, restrict him to less than 30 disposals. Yep. And we're talking before about big disposal winners. Hanbury was really the only one who averaged 28, 29 or more per game. Even 2016, uh, I'm just having a quick look over the stats. He averaged at least like 29 disposals per game. 2015, he had 24 Brownlow votes. 2016, he had 21. Ever since that grand final, uh, he's averaged closer to... In 2017, I think he averaged about 23 or 24. Not big numbers. And his Brownlow vote certainly reflected that. But this year, he's averaged about 22, 21, 22 disposals. He's been very, very, uh, very, very low, actually. But yep. yeah, that, uh, that injury, the uh, knock to the knee and then the corky on the other leg in that final round match against Hawthorne, I think, was probably the difference between us winning and losing. Uh, yep. And do you know what? He, he looked okay to start off with. Like, he hadn't had his hands on the ball much. But, but I think with Hannah's, it. If you if he's working up and down the ground, if he's getting from contest to contest, so he's the one who usually creates it out number for us anyway. Yeah. Um, eventually, he's going to get his hands on the ball, but he just he started off okay. He didn't get many touches, but but once he got that first uh, hit to his knee, it was just all downhill from that point onwards. Um, yeah, it really so was. What I saw like this week coming. Yeah, and look, I honestly hope that all those uh, rumors and talk about him going to St Kilda. Honestly, pay no attention to him. I don't believe him. I, I don't think he's going to leave the club. Uh, not because I'm some sort of blind, hoping fool or anything like that. But I think it's all just what it is. Nonsense, noise, distraction, that sort of thing. Yep. Um, I mean, the club came out and said, never heard of it. Uh, the player basically came out and said, nah, not really. <laughs> not that interested. Uh, I mean, what, what's he going to get paid a million dollars to go and finish anywhere from 18th to 12th with St. Kilda? I don't think he's going to do it. No, oh, I actually wish that we the AFL would bring in some ta- anti tampering laws like the NFL's got over in the states that yep. clubs can't come out uh, outside the trade period and say we're targeting player from X club. Um, it's actually against the rules over there because the way it impacts sort of free agency and compensation draft and draft oh, yeah. selection that kind of stuff. It's actually a form of draft tampering in a roundabout kind of way, and it's illegal yeah, yeah, it in the is. NFL. I think we should do the same here. Well, the other thing is um, the integrity of not only the um, the journalists and the news sources, and it's something discussed previously on the podcast about the fact that uh, Australian sports journal, um, sp- Australian sports journalism, specifically around the AFL, that just seems to be this massive uh, lack of integrity. Yep. But 
a lot of these journalists, they get on TV. Well, they're not really journalists, they're reporters. They get on TV, they become a bit of a personality, and then they get influenced or, uh, I guess, manipulated by player agents. And yep. then they become themselves mouthpieces for player agents. Yep. I don't know if they're incentivized, if they're paid off, if, if there's some bonus or reward for it. But when you got people like Sam McClure, who does a bit of work on Fox footy, Tom Brown, who does a bit of work on Fox footy, and that pinhead on who chats on Channel 7, who looks like he's had his head bumped into a fridge. What's his name? <laughs> Miss, Mr. Mister Arrogant, I am the best in the world. Oh, I always no. talk to on Channel 7, I always talk to him after a match and also on Fox footy. He thinks he's the best thing ever. Um, anyone who watches will know who I'm talking about. They all just say stuff. Uh, yep. They say things without any kind of um, uh, anything coming back at them. They, they just say. That there is um, there is no punishment for any of the wrong things they say. It's just, oh, you know, I said it. I'm a reporter. I take rumor and I turn it into fact. Yep. So they almost all of them report on rumor these days. Yep. And it's very much like um, English and Spain, uh, England, Spain, Italy, with those football leagues and the continental European football leagues. We're not talking AFL, we're talking soccer football. They, those newspapers have zero integrity whatsoever, uh, especially online publications, uh, Football 365, Goal, Daily, Daily Mail, um, and a bunch of the islands, the Telegraph as well. I call that the toilet um, because anything you can just dump in it, you just, they just basically post so yeah it's um i agree draft tampering rules have to be brought in but at the same time i think player agents need a bit of a talking to because they use the media just to try and get a better deal for their uh, for their own players yep yeah i agree and the media is still enough to fall for it yeah and look i don't know if we're going to talk about it later i don't really want to talk about it but obviously darcy moore there's been a link to the swans for <laughs> half the season we've talked about it before we've laughed at it before and we've said why in the hell do we want to sam reed mark two um yeah i mean the guy comes back uh he plays one game and he blows his hamstring up yep yeah no i don't think the swans want to add to their uh what that what um alex johnson calls the dungeon no the dungeon thanks yeah, I don't think we want any more additions down there. Yeah, well, poor old AJ will be captaining the rehab team next year as well now, won't he? Yeah, and his uh, centre-half back will be Lewis Malik and his centre-half forward will be Sam Reid. Yep. His on-ball will be Dan Hanabry. Just just quickly <laughs> on AJ, it's been a couple of weeks since he has reconstruction surgery now. Um, yep. And we haven't heard anything about him, so I'm going to take that as a very good thing. Yeah, 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 at this point I would say so as well. Mm. Um, I'm really hopeful he comes back. Um, really, really hopeful. He would have been my biggest improver. Uh, had he lasted the season, unfortunately, he didn't. Well, actually, think um, his injuries probably... It's funny that the, the Reg Grundy re-signing... Not resigning, guys. Re-signing. Signing, <laughs> for yeah. For another 12 months has come about after the Johnson injury as well. So yeah. um, I'm going to take that it's not just coincidence. No, 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 I agree. Uh, and maybe that was a reason why he took time off. Uh, he wasn't sure if his, his career was going to continue, so maybe there was a bit of stress there, but you never know. Um, no. It's something the clubs don't really discuss. But, uh, yeah, look, honestly, I hope he comes back. I really do. Yep. Yeah, so do I. Now, my, I've talked about my slider. We've talked about a bunch of other players in the media. We've kind of done our little segue. But uh, I'd like to get your first big slider of the season, Josh. Um, he's not much of a slider because he never, he never really did anything, and that's James Rose. Um James Rose, he, how long has he been on the list for? Three years, four years? Uh, a pretty long time, actually. Pretty long time. Debuted against think... the Giants, kicked three goals, really looked good, and then we saw nothing of yeah. him for ages. He's played nine games his whole career. Yeah. Um, he's, his stats are horrible. He gets averages seven disposal per senior game. Um, he actually ranks elite with six tackles per game and goes at a shocking 57% <laughs> efficiency. Yeah. I, I, so um, I'm just chuckling at the... He um... just... At their rated elite for tackle. <laughs> yeah, yeah sorry, I, know, I was kind of shocked at that as well. So he ranks six tackles per game over nine games, but he just... I don't know I don't know what it is with him. You, you watch a lot of Neeful games, he, now that they've got the Neeful live stream, and he just seems to try and take it on alone too often, you know, and I yeah. wonder whether that's his big drawback. He's hard tackling, uh, but that's that's about all he does reliably, his tackle. 
which which is obviously a good thing. But you need more out of him, and and for a bloke who who's uh, for a guy whose career has probably been on the line this year in terms of having to make regular senior appearances or or be cut at the end of the year to create. Um, room on the list. I just I expected more out of him. I expected him yeah. to work harder than he has and he's been it's been really disappointing. And I he'd be one of the people I think they'll let go at the end of the year. Yeah, this is his last um his last season on his contract as well. He was contract up until twenty eighteen. And yeah, he's just um I don't know, he's he has been a disappointment because you can see he has got some ability and he's got some talent. He just can't put it together. I don't know if it's like a a physical issue because I think, he is... I think part of it's the kneeful, the kneeful factor. Just some guys, uh, we're at a huge disadvantage with the kneeful. Um, yeah, it, you know, clearly the the step up between kneeful and uh, and and AFL levels massive. It's much bigger than VFL to AFL level, and and we get a lot of guys who just rip it up. You know, uh, what's his name? Brandon Jack was a perfect yeah. example. Just yeah. tear it apart week in week out in the kneeful, but just couldn't make the transition to senior team. So. Unfortunately, I think Rosie's going to be one of them. I don't know if he's got any trade currency. Uh, I don't know whether, no. you know, he'd probably no. go into a state team or, or a VFL team type thing somewhere else. He'd probably do a right. He might pop up Sydney Uni next year as well. You never yeah, know. Yeah, well, back to the Sydney leagues. I think um, I think he'll probably keep playing in the NIFL. Uh mm. He'll probably go to Aspley or Sydney Uni or one of the other um, New South Wales teams. But, yeah, look, I don't think he's going to get picked up next year. And no. even if he does, I mean, you're looking at kind of like a St. Kilda Carlton um, yep. Someone at the bottom who kind of needs something. He's one eighty five and he's like eighty kilos. Yeah, yeah. He's, so, he's physic- physically, he's a bit of a weird build as well, isn't he? So yeah, he's tall a medium tall and skinny. Forward. Yeah, he's he's like a medium forward, but he doesn't have the body to get to do it. Um, and then when they're no. running through the middle, he he sort of does okay and he tackles hard, but he hasn't got the foot skills to be a mid, and it's just it's ugly. It's an ugly yeah, problem. yeah, hundred percent agree. Uh, and if Just anyone wants to see a perfect example, go back to the Neafil Grand Neafil God, to the Neafil Grand Final from last year and watch the yeah. last quarter and tell me James Rose does not cost our reserves team that premiership. That Neafil Grand Final, yeah, he wasn't great, but uh, you look at someone like Jordan Foot, who had I think about four shots on goal and missed them all, especially mm. one in like the last one or two minutes, he absolutely shanked it. Yeah. But, but, but yeah, look. also also in that last quarter, watch Jordan Dawson and tell me which yeah. one you would rather keep. I guarantee yeah, yeah. it's not James Rose. No, no. Look, um, I thought he's done some okay things in the NIFL, uh this season, but I think that's all That's all he's ever going to be. A um, bit like uh, those cloaks who were never really good, you know, your Cameron cloaks. Um, and what's Jason Cloak? Especially Jason Cloak, uh, who got a couple of games on Collingwood, but were complete spuds, and yeah. they ended up just being VFL specialists. And in the end, Cameron Cloak, he um, played VFL, I think, for one season and then went and played um, just local football. Yep. Yep. Sure, he's a um, nice guy, um, but, you know, you got to turn over a minimum of four year. I think it is on your list to get into the draft, and yep. I reckon he's going to be one of them. Yeah, 100% agree. I, I don't think there's any doubt about that. Same with Jordan Foote. Um, Jordan Foote's contract was up this year. He's pretty much as good as gone. Yeah, well, it's the best year he's ever played for us. Yeah, exactly. Because he didn't get a senior game. <laughs> didn't even get a NEFL game. No. <laughs> uh, so I am going to go on my second one, and I think we actually chose the same player. Uh, I'm not sure if we chose it for the same reasons, but uh, let's discuss this particular one. Uh, our slider, our second slider, is Gary Rowan. Well, hold on, disclaimer. We really like Gary Rowan as a person. Person, yeah. Let's just, yep. let's just a f- put that out there. Right now. We really like him as a person, yep. but this isn't about him as a person. No, this is about him as a footballer. And unfortunately, his, uh, his footballing ability kind of has teetered and fallen off the edge of a cliff. So if we go back to, I guess, last year, uh, he had that game against Colton, which I think summed him up basically the best possible way he had that first game in round six where he was utterly dreadful Mm. he was having an absolute nightmare and then he just went and got himself knocked out he did Uh, he literally did his only achievement for the game was flying for a mark he had no chance of getting and knocking himself (laughs) out it was the only thing he did all game it was hilarious um and when he went off it's like okay then no more of that um and then 
because he actually had a decent game against GWS the week before. Mm. Um, but then his best haul of the year was the five goals against Gold Coast, yep. uh, where he was pretty dominant that game. Uh, he had nine marks and five goals uh, and eight inside 50s, and he picked up uh, three Brownlow votes, which which was very deserved. Um, but his tackling numbers for 2017, they weren't high. They, they, were, they were averaging about, uh, about three a game. This season, though, even less tackle numbers, way less inside um, 50 is like way less, like about half. Um, you're looking at disposals, um, pretty close to half. Uh, marks, half, actually less than half, way less than half. Kicks, about half, half, like, because he played 11 games this year, 16 last year. Yep. He stats just across the board. Now, obviously, there's been some personal things going on. Yeah, that happens. Uh, and it's very unfortunate. But, I mean, that happened quite a long time ago. Yeah, and 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 I'd say that if you take uh, if you take just forget this year and just go back to last year and then compare it to his first year um, of playing senior footy, he actually hasn't improved at all statistically no. over his entire career. Um, the, probably the one thing that's been getting reselected for our team constantly is his, his speed. Because we were, let's face it, we're a team of plotters up until last year, um, yep. and we're still a team of plotters now, but just not quite as slow. Um, um, so it was one of the reasons why I think he was continually getting reselected. But we're starting to get some guys who have got some genuine pace now, um, which is why he finds himself in the needful uh, instead of yep. just getting automatically selected. That's that's the way I see it anyway. Um, yeah, he does a couple of agree. crushy things. Um, um, you know, um, the you know the way he set up, took that overhead mark on the run, and then set on up the Hawthorne last game, goal yeah. against Hawthorne. Great passage of play, um, uh, and I'm glad. Look, I'm really glad he did it, but. But I, so I look at that kind of stuff and I go, well, do you know what? Harry Cunningham could have done that as well. Yeah. Like, that's not a Gary Rowan thing. Um, kicking the goal no, up and sign yeah. against Essendon. Um, he's actually lucky. In the Richmond game get, as well, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's actually lucky he didn't get done for holding the man in that Essendon game, quite frankly. <laughs> Honestly, watch the footage. But I would have expected any of our other forwards would have been able to win that marking contest as well. So, yeah. um, I, I like him as a person. The guy's had an absolutely wretched run, but... Gee, he hasn't had a good year, um, no. and he hasn't improved since he started. He's actually played the lowest number of games in the season since 2013. Mm. So, he has definitely fallen back. Um, his last two seasons have actually been in decline, if you can believe it. So, I'm looking at AFL tables. Um, if you guys ever want to know where I get my stats from, AFL tables, better than AFL. 2016, he had 18 games. He had 140 kicks, 68 marks, 47 handballs, uh, 187 disposals, and 25 goals. Last year, 116 kicks, 64 marks, 37 handballs, 153 disposals, and 22 goals. Uh, he averaged, he had the same number of tackles, 52 in each year, um, and the same number of inside forward 50s, rebound 50s, and things like that. Um, but he did pick up three Brownlow votes for his game against Gold Coast last year. But... 2016, he had 91 contested disposals. Last year, 65. Yep. Um, contested marks, about the same. Marks aside, forward 50. This is the next interesting stat. 2016, he had nine more. Yep. Um, but last year, he had more one percenters, so he's applying more forward half pressure, which is like a, a necessity for a player his size. He's 189.88. He's literally the same size as Kennedy. Yep. He, he had a good year in 2016. You know what? I was going to work and... You know, one of one of the guys I work with is a long suffering Carlton supporter. And I'd walk in there and proudly see in the kitchen go, Hey, did you see what my ranger did last night? sort of thing. because um, he was pretty <laughs> solid. Like he was pretty solid in twenty sixteen, but he's been on the slide since. Um and Yeah. Gaz yeah, he has. Bonk is doing the similar role and he's smashing you all over the park and he's a nine year old kid, mate, you gotta Will Haywood as well. Him. I well, think yeah, the biggest right. I think what I've found is people criticise him potentially the most because of what Will Haywood has been able to do. And he does, to an even better degree, what Gary Rowan should be able to do. But now, let's compare the two players just for a moment before we move on to our next players. Gary Rowan is 27 and he's played 106 games. He's yep. been in the system for 10 years and he's played 106 games and he's 27, Right. Will Hayward, I think, has played like 38 games and he's 19 years old. Yep. 
um, I'm just pulling up his stats right now. So, and this is another really big criticism of Gary Rowan. He averages less than 10 disposals a game. He gets about three marks a game, but he averages less than a goal a game for someone who is literally like a center half forward size player, or maybe even like a forward flank. We're talking like Ryan O'Keefe size and Ryan O'Keefe was averaging a lot better than that. Um, he doesn't do enough. No. Will Hayward, over 10 disposals a game, nearly one and a half goals a game, three tackles a game, that sort of thing, right? Uh, averages more marks per game. Yeah? Yep. Um, he averages two inside forward 50s to Gary Rollins 2.45. He averages the same number of contested possessions, the same... He averages one more uncontested possession, same number of contested marks. Uh, he averages more marks inside forward 50. Mm-hmm. The only thing he's a little bit less on is uh, one percenters. Yep. This is a nine-year-old kid doing it. Yep. And my other complaint about Gaz too is that once he went back to the NAFL this year, which he, he really needed, like he needed to yeah. come out as soon as you go and find some, find some confidence and just learn to find the ball again, um, he looks really disinterested. Like he just, just very poor, yeah. He was, and then he broke his hand, which you know, which was a just a double ouch for the whole situation. But he didn't look like a bloke who was desperate to get back into the senior team, which is my beef with the next guy as well. When we get to him, yeah. Look, let's just go straight on to the next guy. So, um, your third slider there, please, Josh. Oh, I know he's been in the senior team a little bit this year, but he's. I think he holds his spot for lack of another option. That's Dan Robinson. Yep. Agreed. Um, Agreed. Dan Robinson, another guy who just, he's great in the NEFL, um, uh and just can't translate it across to the senior team. And, and I really wanted him to, too, because he, when we debuted him, he showed some promising size, and you kind of go, well, this bloke looks all right, but he just hasn't been able to go past that. Um, um, yeah. He's put himself up for trade once before. No one took him. He might, ha- I think he might have some currency, though. I think a Carlton mm. or a St. Paul or something nah. like that might have some interest in him, but um, I think... I think no, Dan might be done I, with well. I'm just having a quick look at the contract status. So before we actually talk about that thing, let me just um, pull up the list of players um, whose contracts are up this year, and we'll talk about them. James Bell and Jake Brown, they're both Cat B rookies. Mm. Jordan Foote, who I've talked about briefly. Robbie Fox, we can chat about him. Alex Johnson, unfortunately. Jack Lloyd, who's much discussion. But Dan Robinson and James Rose both out of contract this year Yep. to go with Nick Newman, Harry Marsh, and Dean Towers. And also Robbie Fox. Yep. Now, obviously, um, there's a few players who have re-signed. Jack McVeigh, Heath Grundy, and Sam Naismith. But I don't think he's got any value whatsoever. I honestly don't even think he's going to be an AFL footballer next year. How old are we? He's 24 now. He's had six... 24. He's got six... Oh, sorry, he's, he's got 24 games underneath his belt. He's 24 games and he's 24 years old. He's yep. got six years in the system. Yep. Yeah, it's just... It, so I call him a slider, but he's just uh, just a yeah. non improver Probably a better way to put him is that he's just a non-improver. This is the year he needed to come out and say, you know, here I am. I deserve to stay. And it just it hasn't happened, Robbo. Um, and no, yeah, he's look, one of the guys I really wanted to succeed as well. He actually showed a bit of promise a couple of years ago. That's the thing. Like, he really did. But You'd have to wonder how that shoulder yeah. injury affected him, though. He doesn't have anything yeah. like hardness he had a couple of years ago. Yeah, and, and it might be a mental thing. It yep. honestly just might be a mental thing, like um, Ollie Florin earlier this year. But, yeah, it's like you, you look at some of the kids, some of the 19-year-old kids who are nearly killing themselves every match, and then you look at some of the older blokes, like uh, your Dan Robinson, um, your Gary Rowans, your, your Dean Towers. I mean, Dean Towers is no spring chicken. He's, what, 28 years old now? Yep. So, um, Robbie Fox as well. Um, and you really, like, have to sort of uh, question yourself, do they even have a position on the team anymore? Do they have any... Do they Should they even be in the team anymore? We're going to find out in a couple of months. <laughs> yeah. I honestly think we're going to find out a bit sooner than that. I reckon we're going to find out before the end of September who's basically gone. Yep. Um, yep. And the other thing is, like, I, I know we're not going to talk about him as a slider, but we do. Uh, we have got a couple of players that we're going to talk about, about the contract status. Um, obviously, Nick Newman. Um, he has been a bit of a divisive player, I guess, um, this year because last year he was pretty good. 
I thought he had a very good season last year. Uh, and then this season, he's just been indifferent. He was very, very poor when he came on earlier in the season, and then very poor when he came back again. And then he kind of improved. Yep. But he hasn't been anywhere near as good as he used to be. No, I'm still on the fence about it. I still think he's going, um, but... Yeah. Um, but I would be yeah. very happy if he stayed. I'll put it that way. I'd be happy if he stayed, but... It's a, it's an interesting point when, when um, commentators and people say, you know, they compare about bottom six players in their team, right? I would say Nick Newman is in the Swans' bottom six to bottom eight. Yeah. Yep. And when I, when I watch him play... Yeah, can he kick the ball? Yeah, sure, he can kick the ball as good as anyone in the team. There's no question about that. But the thing is, he can kick the ball as good as anyone in the league as long as he's got the time to do it. He, for all the players who play for Sydney, he reminds me of like Jordan Foote and Dan Robinson. Like they are like NEFL specialists who just haven't been able to make the transition. James Rose especially. He, his execution time is is far too slow. Yep. Is, is way too slow and it takes him too long to make a decision and think about what he's actually going to do. So in the end, he actually telegraphs what he's about to do. Yep. Everyone knows he hasn't got a right foot. Yep. And it just takes way too long for the ball to go from hand to foot. And there was moments against Hawthorne where they focused on closing down his left foot as fast as they possibly could. And he just butchered it and turned it over and turned it over. Yep. Yep. I'm glad I wasn't the only one who noticed that. <laughs> So I I think, like, yeah, he's a good player. Uh, When he's got time and space, he is very good by foot. But (laughs) the problem is when he hasn't got any time and space whatsoever, he is a liability. He is a turnover merchant. Yep. Yep, fair enough. Yeah, so, I mean, I'm... He averages three clangers a game. I mean, that's not Kieran Jack territory, but um, that's not good either. Especially when you're averaging less than 20 disposals a game. Especially when you're playing down the halfback line as well. Yeah, yeah, and look, um, I'm just going over some of these stats, but yeah, two, two, three, five, and one was his last five games. So, yep. yeah, they they are some some damning numbers, I would say, especially when you're doing five turnovers from 20, 24 disposals. That's pretty bad. I feel miserable now. Yep. <laughs> now my last slider, um, touching on just them, Kieran Jack. Oh, I think Jackie it's a bit boy. of a. I think it's a bit of a no, no brainer on this one. Um, big fan, very big fan. Uh, what he was able to do for us four years ago, four to six years ago, uh, was the reason why we had a chance to win a grand final and we and we won it. Uh, he was the best two way two way running midfielder. He was the mm-hmm. hardest two way running midfielder, and he could kick a goal. Uh, the last two years, he's had some pretty serious hip injuries, uh, back injuries, and various other injuries. And when he's come back and he's been a bit fit, he's actually looked like a good footballer. But yeah, the difference between his best and uh, what he's producing these days is like a massive, massive difference. Yeah, that that hip injury must be debilitating and chronic. It's the other. Yeah. Um, Look, he had twenty-two against GWS, kicked two goals, and had ten clangers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. that, that's not that's not even to go with his disposal efficiency, which was like thirty percent. I think it was under thirty percent. Yep, it's pretty impressive numbers to be able to kick two goals, isn't it? <laughs> it really is. Yeah, he was um, atrocious at times in that match, but he was still one of the reasons why we got back into it. Yeah, it's it's true. It was a strange match for him actually. Do you know what? Those two goals are probably clangers anyway. He's trying to kick it to the goal umpire. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 100% agree. But then there was those three matches um, where he had eight and then he had two, which he was injured in, and then he came back in round 20 and had nine. And then nine's well and truly out then. But then he finished off the season with 13 against yeah. Hawthorne and people are going, well, why is he still playing again? So, yeah, he's, um, his best is, uh, he's a long way past his best. Yep. Yeah, we'll wait and see what they do with him this year. I don't think they'll let him go, but... Um... No. I think um, I think the writing will be on the wall when his contract runs out at the end of next year. Agree. Like if you look at his 2013 All Australian, he had 19 Brownlow votes that year. Yeah, he was huge, and he was averaging um, uh, a lot. I think he was averaging. I'm just trying to do the math in my head. About 24 disposals a game, and he kicked a goal a game. Yep. So, 
I don't think he's averaging uh, 25 goes into that, like six tackles a game. It's a massive number. Uh, yeah, it really. It, he was really good for us that year, and he was yeah. one of the reasons why we performed so well for so long. Yeah. As a gauge of how good Kieran Jack's best was, the, if you look at, uh, if anyone wants to go and find the open mic episode with Bob Skilton, Bob Skilton um, s- talks about how Kieran Jack is his favourite of the players who are currently playing at the time that episode was recorded. So if Bobby Skilton yeah. rates Jack's hardness, he was as hard as they come, but the poor bugger's just... No, it's fitness, unfortunate now. His fitness is yeah. just falling away now. Well, he was averaging 10 contested disposals a game. <laughs> Ten, huge. If you can believe it, yeah. And now uh, I'm just having a quick look. Now he's averaging uh, way less than ten. He's averaging about five. Yeah, yeah. He's fallen away, and it's just um, that's just his lot, though, isn't it? You know, he, it's just yeah, the way only, it goes when you come towards the end. He's only thirty years old as well, so twenty nine, thirty years old. So he's not like he's an old an old guy. But uh, it, it, the question is whether or not his body can just keep up. And the same things happen to Dan Hanbury. Dan Hanbury is just as hard. As Kieran Jack running both ways and also as a midfielder, but uh, his body's just started to fall to pieces. Mm-hmm. Yep. So we do have a couple of players that we can talk about. Um, obviously, we just talk about them really briefly, um, their futures and whatnot. Um, James Bell and Jake Brown. Uh, we'll kind of skip, but Jordan Foot um, both agree that um, he's finishing up this season. Yep. I hope they finished him up. Yeah, I-, I would be shocked if they offered him a contract. I really would be. Um, yep. Robbie Fox, honestly, think he's a chance to get cut. A pretty oh, chance he, to get cut. He is. So I, oh, I just, I reckon. Um, I think, I think it'll depend on other movements. So I, I, I still think there's enough there to warrant him getting a short extension purely as a depth player. Yeah. And the problem is we've got a lot of the same kind of player as him at the moment. Yeah, we do. We really do. I, I don't think he really. His biggest problem is he actually doesn't fit a role. Or he doesn't play given a role. But... I, I don't even think it's that. I don't. I just don't think he fits a role. Yeah. Because he's not a. Um, he's not a particularly good ball user. He's not a half so forward. That... He's not a winger. He's not really anything, is he? He's a bit no, of a he... just a utility. He's a utility, and I think he he first started out as a back flanker, or as a more of a defensive player. And um, in that loss that we had to Collingwood last year, uh, when Ali was playing, and it was one of Ali's best games of the year, he had seven tackles and finished with 15 disposals and a goal. Yep. So he played back and he played forward. But this season he's played almost exclusively as a forward. But he hasn't really shown much. No, that could be a symptom too. I mean, we must have the worst ball delivering our forward 50 yeah. being team in the top eight at the moment. It's just abysmal at times. And, and I don't know how blokes like that um, manage that. Yeah, agreed. But, but for instance, like he had four disposals against GWS. And at one point, his AFL rating was negative and his champion data was negative. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, he was, he, he was having a real poor game against the Giants. And Hawthorne as well, he was having a pretty bad game. Ben Ronk was also negative against um, Hawthorne in round 23 at one point as well. Yep. Yeah. So I, I, we spoke about that the just, other week. They had no idea why we're playing him as a midfielder when he's that good no, around the goals. Um, uh, and given the I, for other game against Hawthorne, they should have just stuck him up front because it was going to demand a response from Clarkson. So I don't yep. know why we're running down in the midfield. It did my head in. I think he tried to play him as a tagging role against someone like Bruce or something like that, and it just didn't work. No. Bruce is, what, like 26, 27, 28 years old. Yeah, he's the experience. 200 yeah. games or something, yeah. yeah Plus, he's got the fitness. Great. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, Robbie Fox, do you think he'll go? Oh, sorry, do you think he'll stay on the list? Because I think he'll go. Uh, I think I think they'll keep him. Well, I, I think they'll keep him as a depth player, but that'll be dependent on whether someone like Towers goes, you know? Yeah. Now that leads us on to Towers. Um, now earlier this season, he actually had pretty good form earlier this season, uh, and then uh, not quite sure what happened really. He fell off the planet. Oh. Yeah, yeah. That's and and his needle form is bloody terrible as well. So I don't know. I don't Falling know. off the planet's about the best way to describe it. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's he's had a uh, he's had a weird, weird, weird year. I think the club basically got to a point where they just went, we can't keep doing this. 
Uh, he was trying to do that uh, backup rock, um, backup rock roll. Um, he was kind of doing okay at one point. I mean, round round five against Adelaide, he had 17 disposals and a goal and five yep. hitouts. Uh, but didn't play round six. I think he got dropped for round six. Uh, brought back for round seven. Uh, then round eight, didn't have a good game at all in round eight. And then they brought him back for round 16 against Geelong. Did not have a good game at all. He was no. actually really poor that game. Uh, and then he went back to the Neeful, and then in the Neeful, he's kind of, they're kind of doing the same thing with him, playing in that utility role, and he's actually been very, very average in the Neeful at that role. Yep. Yeah, um, I'm, so. who, who knows? Who knows what's going here? But the, the shift in form was sudden and dramatic. Um, yep. So uh, I think he's just going to be a watch and wait. He had three kicks in his last two games. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure they were both turnovers. So, um, yeah, he had three clangers from six handballs and two kicks in his last game so yes that's not good reading i mean he's always been a bit of a uh, turnover merchant but yeah it's that's that's not good reading um one almost one fifth of his uh disposers were clangers actually more than one fifth so that's pretty bad yeah, it's a dramatic dramatic downturn from where he was last year yes yes so i think he's pretty much as good as gone your yep. thoughts um yeah, I, I harry marsh agree. harry marsh nah he'll stay you reckon he'll stay yeah, i think he'll stay and if and if he does, and he, I think he's got, I think he's got trade value as well. So um. he's out of contract though, and he has been repeatedly put on the uh, rookie list as well. Okay. So I think there's a chance that um, I honestly think he's not going to be offered a new contract. Mm, I think his future is going to be tied up with whatever happens with Jake Lloyd. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, yeah, yeah, it's it's an interesting one. Obviously, they're not player for player or position for position, but um, yeah, it's kind of just I don't know. A criticism like he was criticised a few years ago, actually, uh, going back to twenty sixteen uh, when he played in the grand final. Um, that year, he was criticised as being too defensive, and I would say one of the reasons uh, too, too why defensive for the most defensive team of the competition. That's quite a swipe. I know, I know. Um, I, I couldn't believe it myself, uh, and I was actually really upset that he uh, was dropped from the from the team for the finals in place yep. of like um, Jeremy Laidler. Uh, yeah. I just I just couldn't make heads or tails of it because Jeremy Laidler was <laughs> he was fucking poor that final series. He was no good. Um, hey, but he got us so, a win against North Melbourne this year. Jeremy Laidler. Yeah. He's out there guarding space, remember? Was, was that against oh, North Oh, yeah, 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 he was, wasn't he? Yeah, he was, those, wasn't he? Those damn runners. <laughs> oh, mate. Mate, those damn runners, yeah. But, oh, yeah, look, I, I don't know what to make of Harry Marsh. Um, he was too defensive in 2016. So the coaches said to him, you can't be that defensive. You have to be more attacking. Because he was averaging, like, 10 disposals a game, right? So... Mm. Last year, he jacked that right up to about oh, 14, 15 disposals a game. And this year, he was up to... Oh, he's got 130 disposals, which is about 14 or 15 disposals again a game. Um, but his defensive acts dropped way off. Way, way, way off. So, I don't know. I, don't know. I, I, I like him as a depth player. Um, I certainly wouldn't have him in our starting 22, though. No. Um, he might be one of those ones, depending on how the draft turns out. They might delist him and pick him back up on the rookie draft again, which we've done before. Yeah, we've done that about th- two or three times on him. Yeah. Um, Dan Robinson talked about, Jamie Rose talked about, Dean Towers we talked about, um, Jack Mayborn is injured. I think they will be pretty bad to not give him a new contract. Uh, Jake Lloyd, um, just quick thoughts on that. I They need to re-sign think, him. I think he'll re-sign. The mail earlier this year was less about money, but more about length. Yep. Yep. I don't know. I don't know if uh, if you noticed, but a couple of days ago, the Swans put like a, a thing up on the website uh, with an interview f- for him, um, which is basically talking about you know how much he enjoys his role at the Swans. And they generally don't put those kind of articles up unless they're about to re- be re-signed. If the player's on the way out, they don't normally do that kind of stuff. So I'm. I'm hopeful they're going to re-sign him shortly and they're just ironing out the details. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I would say so too. I don't think it's a case of um, Tom Mitchell 
I want more money and I want another year where this one's like, oh, we're only going to give you three years because the previous year you tried to go to Carlton. You tried to stiff us. Mm. So, yeah, it's uh, it's just a weird situation. Now, we'll just do a, uh, a really quick, because we're talking about the um, season after, um, as a whole a lot, but we'll just do a really quick post-buy um, sort of wrap-up. Obviously, before the buy, the Swans were 10-3, and three, five wins in a row, uh, mostly against the lower ladder teams. Um, and then also they were second on the ladder. So they'd beaten Eagles, um, and they looked really good. Um, that was, But there were some warning signs in the Eagles match. We kicked, I think, six points in two quarters. Mm-hmm. We were goalless in the first and the last. Uh, and we should have won by about seven goals. Yeah. But we just didn't score really at all in, the last, in that last quarter. And the Eagles came back. And, I mean, they never really threatened to get back into the game. But they certainly reduced the margin to three goals. Yep. And then uh, after the bye, well... Uh, this is when I was on leave, when I was on holidays, when the uh, blog slowed down because I was too busy having fun and everyone else was not. <laughs> we had um, the away game to Richmond. We lost our first away game. Uh, then we had uh, the home game against the Cats, yeah. which I actually watched. I We watched the Richmond and we watched the Cats game. We were up at five in the morning to watch it. Uh yeah, and then we watched the uh, Ruse game while we're driving between St. Brand and LA. Fortunately, that was a uh, an away win. Uh, and then we watched the first quarter of the Suns game because it was really late. Um, we were up by 40 points. I'm like, oh, yes, it's going pretty well. Checked in the scores a little bit later on, and we're like, why are we down? And I think um, I tuned out, and Mrs. Bloggs was watching it, and she was getting very upset when we were almost five goals down, understandably. Yep. Uh, then, obviously... We came back and we're still pretty jet lagged, so we didn't go to the Bombers game, but we lost that one. And that was pretty poor, yep. pretty poor performance. Pretty poor uh, after half time. Yeah, very poor after half time. And then obviously the Pies. Uh, we Great did very win. well against the Pies. Demons, very good win. Giants, very good win. Uh, unfortunately, the Hawks lost again. Yeah, I. Well. I think with the Hawks and the the Richmond game, there was quite a lot to like about them. Though I got to tell you, I wasn't happy after the loss to Hawthorne, but I'm never happy after a loss to Hawthorne anyway. So there's nothing yeah. in there. Um, but I think there was a lot to like. Um, just a couple of bits of skills execution. There was a couple of bad moments in the first half. Turnovers, uncharacteristically bad turnovers out of the back line. Yeah. Um, yeah. And a, well, a couple at one of point, shots. Well, sorry, on jump in. Yeah. A couple of shots but on one goal point, we normally would have got. One point in the first half, I think they kicked three goals in the first half. They were all from defensive half turnovers. Yeah. But basically, two-thirds of their score, I think they kicked like three, six, or three, seven in the first half. I can't recall off the top of my head. Um, I'm just going to quickly look it up right now. Uh, one second. They kicked three, six in the first half, and I think three, three were from just defensive turnovers. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah, no, that sounds about a bit right. of a shambolic performance from us, I think, in the back half. Yeah, it was. Um, and un- I think uncharacteristically um, like poor for us really in the poor. back half. Yeah. Uncharacteristically poor for us in the back half. Um, but, you know, I think I still think the turning moment for us was the injury to Hanbury because yep. we stopped getting Agreed. the out. We stopped outnumbering them at stoppages and then they were able to double team Kennedy for bits. And, and then it was basically left to George Hewitt to do all the, you know, to be the extractor. And he put up a, a really, really good fight, but we, we let's face it, we got smacked in clearances after Hanover went off. Um, and for yeah. me, that was the actual difference in the end. We just couldn't win enough of the ball out of the stoppages. Yeah, well, Isaac Heaney finished with nine from and 18 disposals. Uh, he had four clearances. George Hewitt had 12 clearances and six, t- six tackles from 24 disposals. But yeah, we just couldn't win it. We were just very flat after halftime, which is very disappointing. But I mean... Given the way that we nearly won that match, probably should have won that match, especially without our two best players. I thought we yeah. did very well. And um, the commentary was sickening that night. Oh, it was disgraceful. Yeah, it really was. Our home form is a big concern. We've played 11 games and we've won five. Huge concern. Now, our, our away form is an entirely different matter. We have played 11 and we have won nine. Uh, we have played at the MCG a bunch of times this year. And we have actually done pretty bloody well as well. Uh, so we beat Melbourne. I'm um, just trying to remember who else we've beaten at the MCG. We beat Hawthorne at the MCG. I think we've only played two games. But we've won them, which is the most important thing. 
So, yeah, it's um, it's a good look for us, I think, this year that we've actually won away. Yep. Because if, yeah, we, I... win next, if we win next week, we're playing all our games away. Yep. Yeah, yeah, and to be honest, I know we talk about how we don't play the SCG very well, which we don't, but I've got to tell you, I don't think the Giants play the SCG well either. No, they don't. No, they, they don't. Um, they, 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 uh, they seem to have trouble getting their run and spread going at the SCG most times, and I think if we go in with the whole, you know, contested ball, you know, our, our old our old contested ball style of gameplay, which, let's face it, that's, that's what suits us at the SCG better. I don't think... Yeah. For a large part, GWS don't really handle that pressure. If you keep it up for all the game, for the whole game, they don't handle it that well. So I, I, I rate us. I, I think we should go in as favourites to win this game, and I'll be disappointed if we don't yeah. get it done for more well, reasons. They Josh, well, they get Josh Kelly and Toby Green back, um, and and they get Phil Davis back as well. So they're going to get some players back. They're actually going to have a pretty fit list when they when we play them. Yeah, hopefully they're out of form. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing. Like um, Toby Green wouldn't have played for, what, months? Yep. Josh Kelly wouldn't have played for a month. Uh, it's just going to be interesting how they actually handle that um, Phil Davis-Franklin um, matchup because the last time they played, I mean, Phil Davis was hanging off him at every single contest. I mean, it was basically, you should have been paid holding a man against him about three or four different times in three or four different contests. Yep. But they're never going to pay it. So, yeah, it's really interesting. Um the AFL, uh, especially Fox Footy, was posting stats um, last week about teams' form versus the top eight. Uh, this is a really interesting one, actually, uh, when we look at how many games have been played and who's won and who's lost. Um, Geelong and Swans have played the most games against the current top eight. They've played 11 games each. Um, now, obviously, the Swans played the last four games against teams in the top eight. They actually played the last four games against teams in the top four. So they played Collingwood, Melbourne, uh, GWS, and Hawthorne, who were all in the top four when they played them. And they won three of the four. Uh, then if you look at players, uh, teams, rather, Giants have played nine. They've only won three. Collingwood, who were fancied this year, I don't know why, they have played eight games against the top eight, and they've won one. So they've beaten as many top eight teams as Gold Coast has. <laughs> As Gold Coast has, yes. Now, Demons, who have been slammed all season for not being able to beat a top eight team, won the last, they actually played three, the last three games were against top eight opponents, and they won two of them. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we beat them. Um, so they've got better form than Melbourne. Uh, sorry, better form than Collingwood. So Collingwood is actually the worst team out of the, out of the entire top eight as for form against the other top eight teams. Yep. Sydney's got the most wins. Uh, Richmond's got seven from nine. So yeah, and all those ones yeah. I lost were away. Yeah, look, Geelong's a bit of an interesting one because they actually lost games at home. Uh, we're still the only team to beat them at the uh, Cadena Park for forever. Yep. Which which I think we can keep that. I think we've won the last three against at Cadena Park, which I'm pretty happy with. We generally match up well against them. Um, it's just a pity we didn't match up well against them at all the second time we played them. No. 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 Form and injuries. It happens. Yep. But uh, look, that takes us into our finals preview. So Thursday, it's going to be Tigers and the Hawks. So who would your pick be for that one, Josh? Out of Tigers and Hawks. Oh, definitely Richmond. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be, I would be very surprised if they lost that one. I mean, there's a lot of talk that Hawks are a good matchup for the Tigers, but uh, let's face it, the Tigers should have that one easy. No, nah, I, I, they might match up on them in terms of um, midfield, get your sort of like um, the stoppage clearances and get tested ball and that kind of stuff. But as far as foot speed around the ground, Tigers have that in spades. The only, the only way that Richmond will lose that game is if, uh, is if they're poor in front of goal which they actually are they're not a good they're not a good conversion team with their inside 50 no. so they get a lot of shots but they kick a lot of behinds um, but I, Rich, yeah. Richmond for my mind yeah I, I'd have to go Richmond for that one as well uh, the other really interesting thing about Richmond is despite their game style which is very stifling um, they usually play they try to play 18 behind the ball they don't, they aren't a high scoring team either I'm no, sure they've not. kicked some they've kicked some scores but if you actually look at like their three quarter time scores in most of the games, they've been between thirty and fifty points. Yep. So it, it's been it's been really really uh, a bizarre season for for scoring. Yes, it's like the lowest I think since like Collingwood won the premiership in like nineteen sixty eight or something like that. 
um, it's the lowest for 40 years, 40, 50 years. But, um, yeah, I think the game these days is very, very defensive. Mm-hmm. Uh, Friday, Friday night, Melbourne versus Geelong. Massive game. <laughs> so the Cats have played 11 games against the top eight. Uh, they played Melbourne, and I think they won one and lost one. Yep. Uh, I'm going to go out on the side, Cats. Yeah, I'm actually siding with Melbourne. I honestly don't know why this is on Friday anyway. Not not when you've got Eagles and Pies on the Saturday. Yeah. The Friday night match should have been the Eagles and Pies match. Just some really bizarre fixturing from the AFL. I suppose because the Eagles and Pies played on the Saturday to that one again, the six-day break. Yeah. But even then, Hawks, well, not six-day break, the the 12 day break but it's, it's very weird anyway um, but I'm going from Melbourne on that one the Melbourne Cats yep yeah I just um, uh, the D's have been really good the last couple of weeks um, I just they've well they've played out of their skins the last couple of weeks uh, whether they can keep that up I don't know I just I just expect more out of the Geelong midfield and it's going to yeah. happen sooner or later um, Geelong's I think their biggest problem is they're not a defensive unit. That midfield is. They way do too not run. No, no, but neither's the D's. So I think. Um, I just think Geelong might have enough to get it done. Yeah, it's it's going to be whoever actually defends. <laughs> that that's going to determine the winner. I think is whichever midfield defends. Yep, fair enough. Um, then we've got Swans Swans Giants. That is the four o'clock game. Um, Sydney by twenty four. Yeah, I'm going to go Swans by at least three goals as well. Yep. That's going to be a good game, though. Um, a good game. Uh, and now, last one. Eagles versus the Pies. In Perth. In Perth. So, with, with Darling and Kennedy back. Yeah, Kennedy hasn't played since forever. I'm going to I'm gonna say Pies because no gaff is going to be a huge issue for the Eagles. Yeah. I, yeah, I would agree. And that was probably the biggest problem with them before the finals was losing Gaff. He is, it's akin to losing Tom Lynch from Adelaide, yep. Jake Lloyd from Sydney, um, or even Dan Hanabry. Dan Hanabry is probably the biggest equivalent. Um, they're very similar. They um, run a lot. They, they are link players. Uh, they don't usually do much damage, but what they do is they get from contest to contest. So uh, imagine Richmond without Cochin. Yep. I don't, I don't think they win that many games. They could probably, they've won games without Dustin Martin because Dustin Martin plays a different role. But without Cochin, no. No. Uh, then, so if we go for our winners, so Richmond winning means Sydney, if they win, would play the loser between Eagles and Pies. And so we're saying the Pies. The pies. We, no, we're saying the Pies would win. I'm pr- I'm kind of going with the Pies to win that one as well. Okay, yep. So we would actually play the Eagles, but it doesn't matter. We'd play the Eagles or Pies away if we won. Now, obviously, uh, if Melbourne and Geelong, the winner of that, plays the loser of Richmond and Hawthorne, which will be at the MCG. So either of those teams don't even leave Victoria. This is a really, like... Um, Hawthorne, Geelong, game. that would be a hell of a game to watch. That would be a hell of a game to watch. That would be an amazing final again for, what, a third year in a row or something like that. Um, yep. Or three out of four years. But um, the thing is, from the top half of the draw, uh, they don't even leave Victoria. They play all the games at the MCG. No. Yep. The bottom bottom half uh, play at least two interstate games. So um, Sydney at home, um, Eagles at home, and then yep. the loser of that plays a home game. Oh, actually, Eagles plays a home game. If they lose, Pies plays a home game if they lose. So, yeah, I mean, we're looking at probably two finals every week almost at the MCG. But, yeah, I've got Sydney for Premier. Who have or grand finals and Premiers? Who have you got? Uh, who would we play? Is that the question? No, I'm just saying we're going to win it all. I always say we're going to win it all. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, well, well, well. Actually, I, I got to say, if 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 we get to the grand final, and uh, this is this is my thing, if we get to the grand final and we're not playing the Tigers, we're going to win. If we yeah. get to the grand final, and we're playing the Tigers. I have no idea. 
Yeah, yeah. Look, um, twenty fifteen, we lost the first final. Twenty sixteen, we won the first final. Twenty twelve, um, we won that first final in twenty twelve, didn't we? I can't remember. There's a lot of alcohol involved in that month. Um, yeah, yeah. I have to go back. I'm actually just looking it up right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, we we actually won that first final in Adelaide. So I can't That's exactly right. say losing, playing four games in a row is actually any kind of form for us. But um, yeah, look, we've won it before, playing four games in a row. If we have to win four games in a row, we've got to win four games in a row. Mm-hmm. If we get there, we're good enough. If if we don't get yeah. there, we're not good enough. Um, and then you just got to do it on the day, but which is easier said than done, obviously. Um, but obviously, I still think yeah. our best, our best stacks up against anyone else's best, except except the Tigers. That's just the way I feel at the moment. Um, yeah. But having said that, they've looked a little bit shaky the last couple of weeks, so you don't know whether what they've been doing this year, whether that's sustainable in the long run or not. My gut feeling says it's probably not sustainable. Um, yeah, great. We'll wait and see. It's going to be a good month anyway, regardless of what happens. Yeah, hundred percent agree. Um, and look, I've always said this all season, and I think it's actually been proved all season that our best is still arguably the best in the league. Yep, you're all paying so, that. Yeah, um, and if you look at the players who are coming back, uh, obviously Franklin and Parker come back for that first final. Uh, we get Nick Smith, who's regarded as the best small defender in the league. Uh, he comes back in a prelim if we make that far. And Sam Reed will come back for a semi final. Yep. And that yeah. would straighten us up something fierce. Even, as we said earlier, even if he spuds it up, doesn't get a mark, doesn't get a possession. She just needs to create uh, a contest, mate, and they can plant Ben contest, Rock yeah. at his feet. Ben Rock and It also lets. Feet. Yep. And also lets um, Tom McCartan um, play a different role as well. Yep. Freeze Maybe Franklin. Maybe play closer to the goal. Yeah. And Franklin um, can play higher up the ground. You leave uh, McCartan and, and Sam Reed in a forward line. Yep. Winner, winner. So, yeah, there's uh, there's a lot of promise. I think uh, I think we can still do a lot, especially if Hanbury comes back and he's fit. Yeah. He is the difference, in my opinion. The difference between winning and losing is Dan Hanbury and injuries. <sighs> yep. Yeah, I agree Do with more, that. please. Yep. All right, Josh. Uh, it has been a very long podcast, but this is a bi week podcast. So thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. No worries. You might have to split that into. I just looked at the time. You won't have to split that into two halves. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to figure it out somehow. Um, as always, guys, we are on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can get in contact with us using the tag The Swans Blog. Also, the hashtags SwansCast and SwansCast Extra. We will be back on, um, not Thursday, but we're going to do it on Wednesday, actually. Uh, Thursday is the first final. Uh, We will preview the Swans match against the Giants. We'll also have a look at the finals, and we'll give our tips on what's going to happen. And hopefully, by Thursday, we'll actually know whether or not our players are back and what's going on there. So, guys, until next time, go Swans. Up the Swannies. Swannies.